Well, good day, everyone. Thanks for joining, and uh, hope you're all well. Um, just want to talk a little bit today about the sim. Um, I've just gone and done a sim PC upgrade. Uh, I think I would have spoken about this before, uh, I think particularly in the live stream that I did a few weeks back, um, but basically in anticipation of X-Plane 12, also the graphical demands of FS 2020, once they sort the multi-monitor piece out properly, um, that I would need to do a PC upgrade. So I thought I'd jump in a little bit earlier, um, graphics card prices are coming down, I was tossing up between holding on for the 4000 series or <coughs> getting a high-end 30 series, uh, 3000 series. Um, but anyway, I have jumped in, um, spent a reasonable amount of money. Um, let's not let the uh, Minister for War and Finance find out about that. But I'll take you through um, what I've done and bought and built. Uh, I'll leave a description of those parts down below um, and then I'll cut to the X-Plane graphics settings that I've now got set um, and with those settings uh, on this current configuration across the three screens in 1080p the sorts of performance that I'm getting and it certainly is an uplift which is really good uh, from where I was before. So without further ado, let me, um, I'll just quickly go through the, what I have here. Uh, and I've also somewhat tried to do a little bit of future proofing in the sense um, that, you know, down the track, if I want to update the graphics card once again, um, to also consider the power supply that I've put in. Anyway, uh, look, this is in no particular order, but I'll... Uh, I'll go through them. Uh, look, the first thing that I've got is the main case. Um, I've actually kept the same type of, exactly the same type brand model of case that I previously had. It was a Corsair uh, 5000D uh, airflow version. Um, and you'll see that there. Uh, and it's a good case. So I wanted to get another one of them. So I did. Um, so I bought myself, that was the case. Uh, inside of that, um, from a motherboard point of view, I'm running a Gigabyte Z690 Aorus Ultra uh, LGA 1700 ADX. Um, bit of a beast. Uh, coupled that with an Intel Core i9 12900K CPU, um, which is good. Uh, the the RAM is 32 gigabytes, two 16 bit gig uh, DIMMs, DDR5, 5200 megahertz. Uh, and what else is on here? Um, in terms of storage, I've got there's actually three drives. The first drive is a one terabyte NVMe. Um, that is running the operating system and the second drive is a two terabyte uh, SSD um, a SATA SSD and that is running running the programs uh, so X-Plane um, FS2020 they're really the two that I've got loaded at the moment albeit I generally am running X-Plane and then finally, I've got a, another four terabyte SSD SATA drive, and that's for all the data. So if you think about the ortho airports and everything, um, <clears throat> that's all loaded into that there. Uh, and what I've done as well is in rebuilding everything from a software point of view, um, I've and that was a big ask as well. So I bit off more than I can chew there because I had to rebuild X-Plane and rebuild everything else, if you imagine, from a software point of view into the new machine. But what I did this time is I created a whole bunch of shortcuts into the custom scenery folder in X-Plane, if you're familiar with that, um, and that made it a bit easier. 
but I digress and I can cover that off in a separate video because I think that'll be handy once X plane 12 lands you can actually almost shortcut them in either direction and therefore play uh, either either sim uh, I think I spoke about the RAM the CPU um, what else is on here uh, I think that's pretty much covered off on the drives um, the I've got a for cooling I've got a Corsair IQ H150i RGB Pro um, and uh, that works well there's six ML120 fans there's actually nine uh, there are three fans obviously on the radiator three fans on the front and another three fans on the side so plenty of airflow going through that uh, which is good um, from a power supply point of view I went really big <laughs> in fact I went ridiculously big and I just thought it's the one thing that I don't really want to be changing out later on you know like having to pull the power supply pull all the cables and redo it all so I thought to myself if I get some big ass power supply in there then hopefully that can somewhat future proof me down the track if if I want to maintain off a single PC so wait for it this is <laughs> this is an EVGA Supernova G1 2000 watt you heard that right 2000 watt fully modular 80 plus gold power supply um, that yeah is a is a beast uh, and I certainly don't need all of that at the moment but who knows where these power hungry graphics cards and CPUs are going incidentally I believe the Z690 motherboard that I have will also take the 13 series CPUs as well so a um, bit of future proofing there um, graphics card uh, here we go uh, now I managed to get myself on special uh, an EVGA GeForce RTX 3090 Ti uh, lots of debate around the 3090 Ti and performance overrun over a 3090 and even a 3080 Ti uh, but this was come down a fair bit in pricing now I know they're probably going to drop a little bit more uh, but um, that's what's in the box now so in simplistic terms what I've changed out is a was a 10900k sorry an i9 10900k coupled with a 3060 Ti on DDR4 RAM similar NVMe operating system and SSD SATAs and I've now replaced that with a updated Z690 motherboard 3090 Ti 12900k and 32 meg of DDR5 so and it has made a big difference so let me take you now and I'll actually cut to X-Plane in the operator station and I'll show you the graphical settings that I currently have set up for that and uh, yeah we'll take you there now okay so here we are uh, at the operator station as you know from previous videos uh, a plane maker I'd be able to switch that's why I love plane maker and x-plane so much you know you can switch off all the elements you know when you've got a full cockpit shell so much easier you know that's all I need to see inside the cockpit so that's what I have um, obviously you know you've got left and right and I've pretty much taken everything else off but that's not what this purpose is now as you can see at the moment I'm sitting at about 25 26 frames and you're probably thinking to yourself well that's um, not that good um, and no it isn't uh, well it's certainly playable 25 frames a second is not too bad um, it's not the best but it's not too bad but remember that uh, this is currently live um, now when I have loaded my sim configuration from this operator station and I've loaded up everything I need I will then actually shut this view down uh, and I do that by simply coming up into my graphical settings the main monitor switch it to 2d panel view only and click done now uh, I've now jumped up to you know 34 almost close to 35 frames a second so those three monitors that are currently sitting inside the simulator that are all on um, that's the frame rate that we're currently getting uh, here on the ground and it doesn't actually move that much and I can show you that through a demonstration flight a bit later on 
In terms of graphical settings, uh, here's what I've currently got loaded and I've been playing around with this a little bit. Um, visual effects I've got set on HDR. Texture quality is right up to the maximum, um, you know, taking full advantage of the, uh, the graphical graphics card and so on, as well as anti-aliasing uh, on the highest quality. Part of my reasoning there uh, was because the monitors that I have are 1080p monitors. Um, so 1080p, um, you know, at 55 inch, you get a little bit of pixelation. So the less amount of pixelation I can get, the better. And certainly I believe the anti-aliasing helps with that. Um, anisotropic, anis anisotropic filtering uh, is set at 8. Number of world objects, played around with this slider as well and found the sweet spot is at high. Um, if I went to ultra, it dropped the frame rates to just below 30. Still could do it, but I felt that uh, let's try and keep it up in the low to mid 30s consistently. Reflection details on it minimal. I haven't got draw parked aircraft on North Shadow sceneries, but I'm using obviously the Vulcan driver. And they are the settings. Uh, you know, I don't need to go through this. And as you can see there, so monitor one, you know, left view, center view, and the uh, right view. So those three monitors, as you can see from the graphical settings, are currently on. Um, and that's what we've got. So we're driving basically three 1080p screens um, at relatively high settings, which is good. Anyway, uh, hopefully you enjoyed that and uh, given you some insights. Um, and uh, yeah, going forward, obviously uh, the flights and everything else that I'll be doing will be associated with um, an RTX you know, 3090 Ti and, and a higher end CPU. So um, thanks for watching. Any questions, feel free to leave a comment in the description below and uh, in the comment section below there and I'll, I'll see if I can't get back to you. Thanks again. Bye-bye. New PC, uh, same case, but much, sorry this is going to be really tight, but uh, much better uh, CPU 12900K and this little bad boy here, you can see that, that is the 3090 Ti EVGA, black.